Um, you know, I've never thought much about building a personal legacy, but I do think that having a legacy is important. And by that, I mean that I'm motivated in life by other considerations, so academic considerations, professional, uh, personal success. And I think it's also important to provide value back to society. You know, at the end of my days here, I hope that I've added great value to those things in society that I think are important. So my family, to society at large, and to the body of human knowledge and experience. Well, how do you add value to society? Allow me to tell you a story from my astronaut past to, uh, to answer that question. In May 2009, uh, two crewmates and I launched to space in a, in a Soyuz capsule atop a, a Russian rocket and an ascending pillar of, of fire and smoke. Returning to Earth six months later in the same spacecraft remains one of the most vivid memories of my astronaut career. It's uh, an experience much better than any e-ticket ride at, at Disney World. So after undocking from the International Space Station, our capsule plummeted through the upper atmosphere like a fireball, and then descent through the lower atmosphere was a wild, jarring ride, something like going over Niagara Falls in a barrel. At the end of a, of a nominal mission, a Soyuz capsule lands under parachute with its crew on the steps of Kazakhstan, which is a republic just to the south of, of Russia. But in an emergency situation, it could land in an ocean, anywhere in the world. Following a water landing, the crew must exit the capsule by themselves and survive alone in the ocean for up to two days, which is the time that it could take for the search and rescue forces to locate and retrieve them. One of my most grueling days as an astronaut took place a few years ago during water survival training in the Black Sea of the Ukraine. The scenario for our simulated exercise was that my crew and I had just performed an emergency deorbit and our Soyuz capsule was now adrift in the ocean. We're to take off our spacesuits and then put on several layers of thermal protective clothing. Finally, on top of all that, a watertight rubberized suit. And although encumbering and hot, this clothing would protect us, against the frigid water temperature. We then open up the hatch of our capsule, jump into the Black Sea, and then we wait for the search and rescue forces to arrive. Now I need to mention that three men in a Soyuz capsule is like three men in a telephone booth. It's impossible for the crew to do much of anything all at once. For our exercise, one crew member laid across the laps of the other two, and while we worked together to try to remove the spacesuit and then to put on the, the rubberized suit, the thermal gear, and also the survival gear as well. The secret to success is to accomplish this training exercise before our core body temperatures rise too high. Working at an optimal pace is critical. If we work too fast, our core body temperature will rise because of an eleva elevated metabolic rate. If we work too slowly, will also overheat because of all this uh, additional layers of thermal clothing uh, that we have on top and also the stifling uh, cabin hot temperature. Well, we failed the training exercise. As our body temperatures rose from 36 degrees Celsius to 39 degrees, we became drenched in sweat and our spirit and our working efficiency fell. And after two draining hours of struggling to get into our survival gear, not even one of us was completely suited. Our core body temperatures were high and they were rising, and the medical doctors that were monitoring our training exercise became alarmed and they aborted the run, and the three of us exited the capsule exhausted and demoralized. If this had been our actual landing day, my crewmates and I would have died. We would have died from either hyperthermia inside the capsule or from hypothermia in the ocean. Well, 
why have I told you such a gloomy story of failure? I told you this story to share the fact that the trajectory to academic, professional, and personal success is not easy, it's not straight, and it's not smooth. Space exploration, for instance, is no kidding difficult. The harsh environment can be unforgiving. Everything about the space environment is trying to kill us. Space vacuum, uh, extremes of temperature, high velocities, ionizing radiation, and of course, weightlessness. And astronauts are consequently expected to live and work at the extremes of our capabilities. So we must face this challenging work environment with determination. Likewise, astronaut training is no kidding difficult. Astronauts spend hundreds of hours training for flight for normal days on orbit, but we spend thousands of hours training for off-nominal scenarios, that is, bad days in space. Here's a secret for you from me. The secret is that it's relatively easy for an astronaut to operate a spacecraft or an experiment when everything is going well. We have automated systems and our job is primarily just monitoring the computers. However, space flight is dynamic and it's almost certain that some anomalies will occur in the, in the mission plan and that some malfunctions will occur in the spacecraft systems or the hardware or the software during the course of, of every mission. So it's during these moments that the worth and the reputation of an astronaut is determined by his or, responses, uh, his or her responses to these events. So, when I've been given specific responsibilities for a mission, I take it seriously. I want to perform these duties flawlessly. Failure is not an option for an astronaut. Failure is not an option because we have been, we'll be representing our nation on the world stage, because we're entrusted with uh, operating spaceflight hardware that's worth not thousands, not millions, but billions of dollars. And because we're going to be performing experiments on behalf of engineers, scientists, grad students who have devoted years of their careers, years of their education to preparing their research for spaceflight. And also, failure is not an option because spaceflight is a risky undertaking. To say that another spaceflight accident uh, involving astronauts won't occur is like saying there will never be another motor vehicle accident involving fatalities on Crow Child Trail. We do everything we can to try to uh, minimize the chance of these occurrences from happening. We do the best we can in terms of human performance, but we know that these occurrences are going to happen again. Well, my crewmates and I were determined to successfully complete the Black Sea water survival training, and that's why we pushed ourselves to do it again. We reviewed each step of the procedure, we adjusted our work pace, and we were ultimately and joyfully successful during a second attempt. The successes that follow such difficult challenges are especially sweet. One great thing about my job is the repeated opportunities to explore inward as well as outward to discover the limits of my personal capabilities as well as the frontiers of my external world. So in the Black Sea, I just didn't explore only the limits of my physical capabilities, but also the limits of my mental and my emotional capabilities as well. I discovered, for instance, that my energy, my cognitive abilities, my willpower shut down when my core body temperature reaches 39 degrees. A year later, during my International Space Station expedition, I discovered that living in an isolated and confined environment for six months makes me homesick for my family and for Earth. And I discovered that maneuvering multi-billion dollar spacecraft with Canada's robotic arm requires supreme mental concentration. And I discovered that relating well with five people of different nationalities, cultures, beliefs, and native languages requires the utmost in psychosocial skills. Well, if I've been successful in my career, it's because I've had these repeated opportunities to function at the limits of my personal capabilities. It's when I function outside of my comfort zone 
that my performance is highest and my achievements are most meaningful. Let's take a look in this next slide uh, at the photo of my home office. So you notice here besides my messy desktop, there's a couple other things uh, on the wall. There's an art print above my desk of Bobby Orr. And in the, the bottom right corner of the frame of that uh, art print, there's a, a verse from a poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I've placed these two items deliberately on the wall above my desk so that I can be reminded that success often requires extra effort. So Bobby Orr is a role model, he's a hero of mine. He changed the role of the hockey defenseman because he had talent, but also because he worked harder than anyone else. He worked so hard that his knees gave out midway through his career. The lines from the poem, The Ladder of St. Augustine by Longfellow read, the heights by great men reached and kept were not obtained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. Some of the skills required of an astronaut come harder to me than others. Learning foreign languages, for example, is my Achilles heel. While I may not be the most linguistically gifted person in the world, I bet I'm one of the most persistent. What I may lack in natural ability, I make up with determination to reach what may seem impossible. Well, in spite of its challenges, I can't imagine any career so fulfilling and so downright fun as being an astronaut. My career provides opportunities for hands-on work with cutting-edge technologies, opportunities to participate in the advancement of science, opportunities to showcase Canadian innovation, opportunities to view our world from a different perspective. Astronautics is synonymous with adventure. My wish for you is that you regularly explore the limits of your physical, emotional, and mental being. And if you live in this way, you will experience unimagined opportunities, personal success, and you'll provide value to society. And if you do all that, the legacy thing will take care of itself. Thank you and best wishes.